Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm EVM and this is about that, a gasometer or GOM as it's often referred to in EV world. Now I'm in a petrol car right now and I've got a gasometer in this. They've been around for years, longer than electric cars have. But with a petrol engine, people look at them as, well, it's, oh, well, I've, I've got 100 miles left, I've got 161 miles left, something like that. It's just a bit of a guide. Whereas with an EV, it's seen as a bit of a, ooh, it's a scary thing. It makes people panic. And ultimately, a lot of mainstream media and anti-EV types out there use it as a reason as to how useless EVs are. Oh my God, I've just lost 40 miles off my car because the guessometer tells me I have, when in reality, it's nothing like that at all. So that's ultimately what I'm talking about in this video. The guessometer is a good guide, but if you're willing, maybe brave enough, you can override it. You can ignore that. Just to interrupt, every now and then I get the odd message saying, do you not do any sort of different clothes or man grooming type stuff? Well, all I'll say is that be careful what you wish for. And if you have posted that comment, this is your fault. You've been warned. Now, the reason for that little bit of a warning is because this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the men's grooming market. And their performance package 4.0 is a game changer when it comes to creating the ultimate men's grooming and hygiene bundle. This does actually look quite cool. Their fourth generation electric trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade designed to reduce grooming accidents and has a 4000K LED spotlight. Because this trimmer is waterproof, you can trim in the shower and finally say goodbye to the mess on the bathroom floor. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer also features a smart cordless charging system up to 90 minutes of use on a full charge. It also includes the new Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer cordless rechargeable and has a battery with up to 45 minutes of runtime and is created with proprietary technology which helps reduce nicks, snags and tugs in those delicate nose holes. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Simply apply the Crop Preserver after your shower for an all day body odour protection. The Crop Reviver is a convenient spritz with cooling aloe vera. Two free gifts in their performance package 4.0 the Manscaped anti-chafing boxes, and the Shed travel bag. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use promo code EVM. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with the promo code EVM at manscaped.com. As I said, careful what you wish for. Well, hopefully some people are still actually watching this and remember what the original topic was about. Effectively, it's about the guessometer and why you can override it. Now, right now, my car says I've got 107 miles of range left, or 49%. That's fine. Given the sort of driving I've been doing over the last week or so, and what I'm doing right now, it's very similar, same area, so I would agree with that assessment. But ultimately, I know that on a lot of journeys, I shouldn't pay attention to this. I can be way more accurate, because the way the work is effectively, well, over the last, let's say, 50 miles of driving, you've been this economical. Based on that economy, and then I reckon, okay, well, yeah, you're gonna have about this range. But what if I'm going on a completely different journey? What if I'm not just doing the local commute or the driving? Then things are very different. And that's my point. I know what I'm about to drive, or at least you should do, and whether you use a sat-nav or not, you know what you're doing, you know where you're going. So let me give you an example. This is what happened to us when we were driving back from Scotland. The car reckons that to, we will not really make it effectively, 1%. It's five degrees still, it was four before. The rain has been torrential, but it's now easy enough. 112 miles to go to the charger, 64%. It, what does the car know? I'm not gonna listen to the car. So essentially, the car was going you're not going to make it. And after that, after the, the camera bit, it went down to about minus six, minus seven percent, it reckoned I would get there on. 
So I wouldn't get there at all. He was saying, come on, charge. You're going to have to charge before you get there. And I knew that that was not the case because on this particular journey, at least, and this is why you should do at least a little bit of research ahead of a long journey. We were going home from Scotland. We were going over the Cairngorms and then back down the other side. So going up for, I don't know what it is, 20, 30 miles, maybe more. We're going up over, over that period, so we're climbing, essentially. The economy, of course, would be much lower because we're predominantly going uphill. So the car thinks, right, well, at this economy rating, you're definitely not going to do the next 50, 60 miles or however long we had left. But, again, I knew we were about to get to the peak. We were about to start going downhill for the next 20, 30, 40 miles, and my economy would go up significant, significantly over the past 40, 50 miles where we've been climbing. That wasn't taken into account by the gasometer by the car. Now, some cars are better than others at predicting this, but for the most part, they're not very good. It said I would get there on minus seven, and we eventually arrived with, if you watched that video before, you'll already know this, 2%. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, whoa, that's cutting it fine. But, you know, I was genuinely not worried because I knew what I could get out of this car. I know that in this, the standard range plus, on that type of journey, uh, you know, as in the speeds, 50, 60, 70 miles per hour on the uh, A9, is it? I'll get about two miles for every 1%. More if I drove even more economically. So I wasn't worried. I knew when I was... 50 miles away that I was still fine, 40, 30, 20. When I was 10 miles away, I'm like, yeah, we're still good. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna be close, but we're, we're still fine. And I was charging immediately, so I'm not worried about dropping the battery below 20%. That, that's something that people seem to think is a very bad thing, but it's not, if you need it, 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 if you charge up quickly, it's not a problem because it's leaving it on a very low charge for a long time, that's the problem. Anyway, back to this. What I would do, or what I did in this case, was when we were about, let's say, 20 miles away, I knew the last charge of before the one I was aiming for was about 15 miles from my destination. So I was five miles from my last potential charge stop. At that point, I just reevaluate. Okay, I'm 50, oh, sorry, 20 miles from my destination, and I've got 11% left. I know I can do that journey. I know I can do 20 miles on 11%. I might ease off a bit. I might drive a bit more economically just in case. But effectively, well, it was fine. Clearly, as, as I show, we got there, no problems. So I'm not saying ignore it and just keep going and say, well, I can definitely get two miles per percent or whatever you've got in your car. You've got to keep reevaluating as you're driving. When you're halfway there, am I still on target? If you're driving a little less economically for whatever reason than you thought, then you go to the plan B. You thought, well, all right, I'll stop a little bit earlier than planned, things like that. So it's a constant sort of maths game as you're driving along, but it's not a difficult one. In my previous Leaf, the 30 kilowatt hour Leaf, I knew I could get, on average driving anyway, about one mile for every percent of the battery. The guessometer is or usually is on the majority of cars pessimistic because it doesn't want you to run out it would rather say stop and charge to be on the safe side rather than eh, you will probably be fine now obviously you have to adapt this if i was going to a destination at the top of the peak district or the, the, the pennines or something then i would know that well getting there is going to be less economical i'm predominantly going uphill so you know you, you, you can't just have a generic thing you have to constantly adapt to what you're doing where you're going the weather of course if you turn your heating on that's going to have a bit of an effect in fact let me mention that this is something which a lot of youtube channels and even mainstream media pick up on turn the heating on for example oh my god i've just lost 30 miles of range now again this depends on the car some are better than others at predicting this but what actually happens is the car suddenly uses a lot of energy heating the cabin up like a cold house, it takes a lot of energy to get the heat into it first. But once you're up to temperature, it just needs to maintain that temperature. So for the next five miles, say, or three miles, however long it takes, the car's pumping a lot of energy into it to heat itself up. But after that, the consumption of the heater is, well, it drops significantly because it just maintains the heat rather than increasing it, which is, you know, exponentially more. So the guessometer will go, oh, you're using a lot on your heater. 
I'll assume you're going to use that for the next 50, 100 miles or whatever and knock it off accordingly, which is why gasometers do this all the time. I'm sure you know, many people out there have driven any car, petrol or electric, and thought, well, hang on a minute, it's gone up. I've driven 10 miles and it's gone up. Well, it's because you've been driving a lot more economically than the previous 50, probably. Same with EVs. Well, I had 200 mile range, I've done 10 miles, and now it's saying I've got 160. I've lost all that range. How useless are they? No, it's predicting based on your driving style how much it thinks you've got left. Which is, again, it's the same. It's always been like this in any car. Funnily enough, the more economically you drive in any car, the further you go. I mean, it's not rocket surgery, really, is it? If I did a long journey, I would probably, well, I will override it. I know what I can get out of my car. But if Lorna was driving, she's not really interested. She, it, it, she doesn't enjoy driving. She doesn't see this as a challenge. She doesn't want the hassle, shall we say. I think that's probably the fairest. And I don't think many people do either. So you don't have to do this. I'm just saying you can do this. She would probably go, no, I'm just going to go off what the car tells me rather than what I think I can get out of it. And if I have to charge, then so be it. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. There's nothing wrong with playing it safe, which is what these guessometers do. But if I'd have played it safe on that previous journey in Scotland, I would have stopped about 20 miles sooner than I actually wanted to and ultimately did. And that would have had a knock-on effect for the rest of the journey, the other 250, 300 miles we were doing after that. Again, not a major issue, but I'd made my plans and I knew I could do it, so therefore we did. So the advice, well, for me is, if you wanna do this, then by all means. I'm sure some people already do it right now. How much can I get out of my car? I know that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore this. That's why I always have the percentage readout on this, rather than the miles left prediction. Some cars though, unfortunately, don't give you that readout. You just have the guessometer or the GOM, which is really infuriating. But I can't do anything about that. So in that case, you just have to go where off what it predicts and hope it's accurate enough. I know the Zoe doesn't do that, or at least the old ones don't. The Subaru Solterra and the Toyota one, that doesn't, although it will do soon, because ultimately it's what you want. The percentage is the accuracy for you to make a good prediction, whereas the prediction of the GOM, especially if you weren't the last person to drive the car, it could be way off. Did they drive economically? Did to drive like a lunatic. <laughs> so that's it really. Um, ignore the gum if you want. If you don't, then that's fine as well. It's your choice. But I often find that we, a person, is way more accurate than the predictive algorithm or whatever it is they use in any car. How many times have you driven a petrol car and it said you've got zero miles left? But you've overridden that, haven't you, to get that extra 10, 20, 30 miles because ah, I'll be fine, I want, I want to go to that petrol station or I know I can get home, I'm okay. So this is something people do all the time. I'm just saying it seems to be more of an acute issue with an EV and you can just it'll override it just as easily. So there we go. So thank you for watching, guys. Um, members, subscriptions, all the usual advert caveats at the end of a YouTube video. Um, if you want to support the channel and all that sort of stuff, I won't go through it all because I've just given you a really, really fun advert at the beginning of this one. So, you know, I'm not going to apologise for that. They've paid me to uh, shave things. Again, careful what you wish for. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.